Okay, hi. Yeah, hey, hey, hey. Um, so I don't really know if this is going to be the setup for the rest of these videos. Um, this is probably the first one I'm going to upload, so you don't even know what other set I'm talking about. So, okay, who cares? Um, so I was outside <laughs> relaxing, and I randomly thought about the fact that, like, I was thinking about how racism works on a scale. And I know that's weird. Why were you outside thinking about that? Um, because somewhere in my head, I was thinking about what happened between me and this former cop. The police coming straight from the underground. A young nigga got it back because I'm brown. I was going into Fordham, which I'll never do again. And <laughs> I swear to God, I was looking for film locations because I was doing a Slender Man series at the time. No way to me. And I was very surprised that it was picking up steam. So I was like, all right, uh, for that much attention, I guess I'll go the extra mile and scout a location. So I ended up at Fordham. I ended up near this uh, like trashed house. It was abandoned or whatever on a block full of really nice houses. So I'm going down to each house asking, do you know who owns it? Do you know what property dealers? Blah, blah, blah. Regular questions filmmakers ask. And then I get to the house right next to it. So I go... Like, and I just kind of peer my head, like it's all gated. So I just peer my head over the gate just to see what was in the back. I didn't like go in or whatever. That's pretty simple to figure out and easy. Um, and the lady come out, the lady in the, ne in the house next to it, the one we skipped. I guess we shouldn't have skipped this. So she's looking at us and I'm talking to her. I'm like telling her, hey, I'm a filmmaker. Hey, I'm this, blah, blah, blah. I'm looking for a place to shoot. Um, would you happen to know that? But before I can get to like the third question, because she doesn't respond for the first two. She says, no, you are the guys who probably were out here vandalizing it these last few weeks. I'm going to get my husband, and he's a, uh, an ex-cop. And I'm like... But why? Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? That would be great. Now, I need to say in this part of the story, I was like not... I've never been ignorant of cops, and I clearly knew what she meant by that, but like I wasn't going to let her have the 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 word on ex cop means like something's gonna pop off i'm like you'd probably be better off with somebody who legally could talk to me about these things so cop come out with a gun and the cop is like saying these things about like people who have been there before uh you look like one of them and everything and i'm like okay he's like going on a little bit deeper but i clearly don't have the time nor brain to remember this um, and he just, he has his gun and it's not apparent to me that he has a gun in his hand until he really turned over. And when he turned over, he was like, yo, if y'all don't leave right now, I'm going to shoot you. And like, so I'm with two other people and in my head, I'm like, all right, I'm going to just dip because somebody tell you, yo, I'm going to shoot you. Odds are they're going to shoot you. But it's the way he said it. Now, obviously, these two people were white. I don't have to specify this. But it's the way he had, it was the authority in his voice. Like, you knew he was an ex-cop, but he spoke not like a police officer. He spoke like somebody who knew he could get away with shit. Like, you know how confident men, really scumbaggy confident men, like, swear to God they can bag any woman. And, like, they'll go up to her with, like, the utmost <laughs> energy. <laughs> Oh my God, it was like that, but like the the ability to kill you. That's just deep, bro. That's deep. And I was thinking about like how I left. I left, and then all of a sudden, I think it was like seven detectives. It was like three squad cars and like yo, just mad, like uniformed officers with their guns out. And I'm like, it's obviously linked to the guy. He obviously called in and said, hey, I got a tip on these guys. Like, and he clearly could remember how we looked so well. But the audacity of that man to just like, and that's what made me think about it outside. It was like, imagine I was like smoking in front of my house and somebody, my next door neighbor says, I don't like that. So they call the police and say, can you get him to stop? They show up and already I'm tense.
What if they decide, all right, like we're just going to arrest you for having weed possession, even though we know you can't, we can't. And if you resist, resist, oh, sorry, I'm so sorry. If you resist arrest, then all of a sudden now you're like resisting arrest and that can get you landed more time. And then they'll find a case for it and they'll say, oh, you know, he was doing this, this and that. Oh, and while I'm in the jail, what if somebody sees me and says, oh, he fits the description of somebody else we were looking for. And oh, this, that and the other. And it's like just the little action of not being open and judging somebody. Just in that instance, he said he never met me a day in his life, but knew I was a criminal. I had a suit on, a full suit on in the summer. So yes, I am a fucking idiot. Trust me, we're going to get to that and like somewhere in the future. Just yo, it's just he knew that I was a criminal and I had never been taken in by police, nothing. And he knew a truth that wasn't a truth. What do you call that? What what do you call the ability of someone to just be able to like do that? You know, like, and I missed a wedding. I missed a wedding because this guy felt like I was a criminal just because of what? It wasn't my dress. It wasn't my speech. There was nothing identifying me of that, of any type of theft. I wasn't nervous. I wasn't shaking. I wasn't like darting my eyes. I didn't have anything on me. I had my camera out. So what was it? Is it prior? Is it like prior thought on his behalf? Because it still ruined my day. People do that all the time. You know, you think an innocent police call, all right, they'll just scare him away. And no, you end up ruining somebody's life. What if my career had got sincerely damaged? What if that was the wedding I'd been waiting for? And on that day, an ex-cop, not even somebody on the force, an ex-cop decides I'm going to ruin this kid's fucking day instead of just leaving them alone. And then we're going to do that thing where, what if he had shot me that day? What if he had shot me and killed me? Now I got to think, would anyone have cared? Would there be any charges? Would my father just grieve because he lost his son? Like, it's these questions that I got to think about every time I go outside. And it's like, yo, I wanted to make a first video that was going to be funny and like this and like that. And I wanted it to be so well structured and so, so, so like not self-serving. And I wanted to throw in a little meme here and like, and it's just like, yo, I can't focus on that. I keep knocking the damn mic. I can't focus on that. I can't, I can't focus on that. And it's like, I, I don't know where to go from here as, as an Afro, as a black, like as a human being with darker skin, I don't know where to go from here. So I guess at the title of this video, I'll add like, and this is why I don't upload as much because everything has to have some intrinsic value to it. Now I can't waste people's time. I can't just do throwaway videos like these. This is not a throwaway video, by the way. I hope to God you're still watching by eight minutes. Like I can't. I can't, I, I don't know how to be funny. I don't know how to distract, distract myself from the idea of it's all fun and games when I'm in front of the camera, but what if I start live streaming and some white guy thinks it's funny to swap me? Will the police know? Will they care? Like, all of that is like eating into my day-to-day, and I don't know what to do about that. And that's my first experience Really realizing that at the, God damn it, at the end of the day, they don't really care about you. And it's sad because now I feel like I want to take a position of leadership. That's not the sad part. But I'm so scared of what if I fail there? What do I mean? What what words do I say that matter? And I have to pick them so carefully so I don't waste people's time because social media is a pit hole of like adrenaline where each post is... Who's going to listen for nine minutes? Am I at nine minutes? I'm pretty much at nine minutes. Thanks, guys, for listening. Uh, As I said, I don't know if this will be the setup. If you like it, hit the like. I don't even think I'm putting this on YouTube, but if it ends up on YouTube, hit the like. Facebook has like two. I'm literally a fucking moron. Thank you for watching. I don't know. Be happy.